So I'm gonna apologize in advance. This road is really busy. Traffic goes by fast, so it might have a hard time hearing me a few times. But first thing I wanna point out, which is very important for voltage regulators. One sec. Uh, transport truck just went by. So they've got this warning on it. Fix regulators on neutral position and switch off control panel before operating bypass. So I do have some videos in the past describing all the equipment up in the air. Definitely recommend checking that out. But those blades that are in the open position, they are the bypass. So one thing we are going to do during this inspection, if at all possible, is check for proper operation of the neutral light. We must have two verifications in order to close that bypass switch. One is the neutral light and the other is this dial. Currently it is on tap three. Those two other hands are the lowest. It is tapped since last inspection as well as the highest. We will reset those as well. The other verification could be the neutral light which will be in the panel. And if one of those, if, if that dial fails or if the neutral light fails, we would have to use, uh, we could use the volt stick by sensor link to verify that there's zero difference in voltage between the source and load side. And there's another piece of equipment, I'm not sure who makes it, that also verifies the voltage to make sure there's a zero voltage difference. So first thing we're going to check, actually I'm going to grab some pictures here before we crawl through this ditch all right so I do want to make sure <clears throat> that I I do want to make sure that I get the reading let's zoom this guy in on my camera I want to get the reading on the dial as well as the unit number in each photo so we're gonna grab all three of those Also, it's important to note the current tap position because when I check that neutral light, like I said, this guy's on tap three. Every time I bring that guy down a tap, it's gonna lower the voltage by a couple percent on the line. So let's say this was on tap, I don't know, 12. I'm not gonna lower that down 12 taps to check to see if that neutral light works. That's gonna spit out way too low of a voltage on the remainder of the line. But where it is on tap three, this guy is on tap three, and this guy is on neutral. So I should be able to verify the neutral light on all three of those units. So now that I have the photos, let's crawl through the ditch here. Our next inspection, before we touch anything, is to verify all the bonds. We can see our panel box is bonded to ground we do verify all three boxes I also did notice this guy here there's a wire sticking out not sure why I thought maybe someone stole some of the copper at first and I'm not sure what it is but that's a brand new unit up there and our neutral wire is down low this is our neutral wire right here in the center of the screen it dead ends at that pole and some 4 out copper comes down across the cross arm and it's bonded to the neutral to make sure that that's tied through. So that is still intact. We're also checking the source load, which is basically the neutral of the tank, coming out of that bushing there. And our case ground, which is this guy here. So all the grounding and bonding is intact, so we can carry on with our inspection. So let's start at our unit here. Um, I'm not going to show exactly how to operate these panels. There are a couple different panels. You can see the neutral light is working there already. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to grab a photo of, I'm just going to move the camera aside here. I'm going to go into the computer and we are going to document the total operations of this unit. So this unit has tapped 6,644 times since it was set up in the field. This guy here has an old school counter, 458,122. 
All right, we'll grab a picture of that. And this guy here, I've got to go into the computer screen again. And we've got 3,798. So as I mentioned, I'm always, when I take photos starting from the first unit, moving to the end. Next thing we want to do is, next thing we want to do is look for the current voltage. All right, so the voltage on our first guy is 124.2. I'm gonna grab a photo of that. And we're just gonna pause the video here while I grab the voltage on the other two units. So our next step here, and again, I'm not gonna show on camera exactly what I'm doing because I don't want any liability on showing people how to operate these things, but we're gonna switch the units off. So right now, if the voltage goes outside of the bandwidth, what I mean by bandwidth, Let's say this bandwidth, let's say this guy's set at uh, 125 volts and the bandwidth is at maybe 2 volts. When that voltage goes above or below that 125 by 2 volts, so 123 or 127, it'll adjust the tap to bring that voltage back with inside the bandwidth. So that's most importantly what we want to check on these units. So we were set at 124. So let's bring that guy outside of the band high. So I'm going to shut off the unit and I'm going to manually raise the tap changer here and by shut off I mean put on manual these new units I don't know if you heard those two clicks but I just tap that for a second and it it goes fast the older units you have to actually hold it down if you hold this guy down it's gonna start ramming through those those taps like crazy so we have our indicator lit up outside of band high now this guy here without using our multimeter Let's go into the settings. I should be able to get the instantaneous metering without using my voltmeter. So you can see we bumped it up to 127.3 volts. That is outside of our bandwidth. And there is a time delay setting on these units. It's typically 30, 45 seconds. And depending on how many voltage regulators banks there are on the line, we don't want them all set at 30 seconds because they're going to be fighting against each other as they adjust the voltage. So what we do next is we're going to put that on auto and wait for 30 seconds, maybe 45, to see if that automatically taps. Now while we're waiting for that, a few things that we're also keeping note of is how long I can see the clock on my phone. So I'll check in the computer to see what this unit is set at. If it's set at 30 seconds, I want to confirm that within that 30 seconds it does auto tap. If it doesn't auto tap for two minutes, there's a problem. I'm not gonna fix it, we'll call in the subtext and they'll make the adjustments internally on the computer. And also, we wanna check that it confirms, or that it, um, complete loss of words, it, it matches up with the bandwidth setting. So if the bandwidth setting is two volts and I'm up to 127 and it doesn't say out of band high, I might go one more tap and, oh, it's tapping already, I'll show that on the other unit. But then also there's a problem if it doesn't match up with the bandwidth. So it automatically taps down, brought it down to 125.7. So what we're going to do now, sometimes if unit fails, it might not auto tap as it goes up outside on the high side or the low side. It might not necessarily fail on both ends. So we do want to check both sides. So I'm going to go back to manual tap. I'm going to lower it again. I believe it's on tap 4 right now, so I'm going to drop it down 4 volts, and I'm going to see if that neutral light comes on. There's our neutral light. It was on tap 3. Okay, so the neutral light is functioning. Now an important part here is we want to make sure that neutral is accurate within what it shows on the dial. And it is. So this unit is working perfectly. Oh, that's quite a hill. Our voltage is now 123.6. So everything's working great on this guy. One of the last things we want to do, reset our drag hands. So actually, I'll show you guys this. 
out of band low. That light was just flickering on and off because it's right on the limit of the bandwidth. What you'll, the reason there's a time delay is as soon as the voltage goes out of the bandwidth, you don't want that to start tapping. Otherwise, it's gonna be tapping up and down like crazy when it's sitting right on the edge of the bandwidth. So that's why there is a 30 or 45 second delay. So we're gonna reset the drag hands. Here it goes flashing again. When I go back to my truck, I'll look up and visually make sure. Some of the times the drag hands stick on the older units, but they should come back down to the actual setting. So we'll confirm that. We're gonna put this guy back on auto. Now, one of the most important things to remember when doing a voltage regulator inspection, last step you're gonna do is place it back on auto. If you forget to put it on auto and leave it shut off or on manual, when everyone's cooking their shepherd tonight, that voltage on the line is gonna go crazy low. There's gonna be problems. Whoever's doing the troubleshooting is gonna be at the local address that called, and they're gonna be wondering what the heck is going on, not even thinking to check back to the voltage regulators until after a good hour or so of troubleshooting. So, most important step, return that to auto. And then, what I always tell guys when I'm training them, we returned it back to auto, check the condition, everything here is good, brand new unit. Now, right as we close that door, last thing we're gonna do, when you go to close that door, double check again. Make sure, this is very important, make sure that unit is on auto. So close the door up. And last but not least, we are going to lock up our unit here. All right, so let's go over to the third one because I do want to show you guys this. So this guy was on tap four, I believe. So we're going to put him on manual. This is what I want to show you guys here. All right, so there's our secondary voltage. Now let's raise this up. You'll see that voltage instantly jump up. 125.2, go up another tap, 126, we're still not outside of our bandwidth, one more should do it, 126.7, we are outside of our bandwidth, high, now we're going to put things back on auto, and go through the same procedure for each of these three units. So I'm going to shut the camera off now, pretty much covered the basics of what we are checking here. When we get, when the subtext come here, they do some way more involved readings, TTR readings, transformer own readings, it's all documented. There's some paperwork inside this cabinet here, but that's all we're doing for today is verifying that the unit is in good shape, that it's functioning, and that the panel's not full of water and falling apart on us. So I'm gonna pause the video, finish off this inspection, and head back to the truck.